tell us why you've changed the name and the deal that you did in order to do that. Okay, so we sold a company called Arista Life Science. Um, it, what, we sold it for about $4.2 billion in cash. We've used that money. Uh, in a ta it was, it, there was no tax leakage from the deal. We paid off $4.2 billion of debt. So now we are repositioned really in our industrial electronics uh, operations, and especially chemicals. What would have been the old McDermott, the old Alent, and the old OM group have combined into one organization um, now called Element Solutions. And it's a great business, very high cash flowing, free cash flowing business. Uh, the most under-levered company I think I've been in for a very long time, um, uh, less than two and a half times leverage. Um, we're going to return some money to shareholders in the form of buybacks over the course of the next few months. And um, we're very excited. Uh, Martin, I know a number of your investors who obviously had great faith in you, given your track record. They're not that happy about what happened at Platform, though. I mean, you look back, the stock was far higher a few years ago when you certainly, when you initially came out. Uh, what do you tell them now uh, in terms of what your expectations are and why they should stay with you? So a number of things. First of all, as you know, like so many people who do a portfolio of investments, uh, some have different levels of success than others. If the same investors, the people who were in, for example, restaurant brands, they're not unhappy about that. Same with Nomad Foods. The reality is, is everybody's made money um, uh, in platform, uh, except if you timed purchases poorly. Um, but the reality is the business is very healthy. There's a lot of upside to where e uh, ESI is as a company. Um, it's a great business, and um, the ones who hang in there, I think, will make money. I've been buying a lot of stock myself over the last uh, couple of months. I've invested, I, I can't remember, over $20 million in buying shares myself and the company. Nicholas Bergruen and I together own over 30 million shares in the business. We're very focused on the upside of this company. You're no stranger to special purpose acquisition corps. You mentioned Nomad, of course, which was one originally. This as well. You've also got J2, I think, which has yet to actually do a deal. Correct. And time's running out. Are you going to do something on that one? Uh, there's plenty of time. Um, I'm not at a, at a stage of my life where I do deals for the sake of doing deals, as you can imagine. Um, I think having a billion and a quarter of cash today is probably worth more than it was six months ago. So there are more opportunities out there that we're looking at, we're taking our time. Martin, where are we with new brands? I saw the Jocelyn sale for less than what you paid. And I understand that they have debt issues, so I could see why they would have to sell some things. But the stock really has done nothing since uh, the big issues about who's on the board. What's the next move there? I know you're still a shareholder. I know you're not in management, but it has been a kind of a dead stock. So let me be absolutely clear. I haven't been a shareholder of new brands for almost a year. Okay, so, so but I, I stepped out completely. It's completely in my rear view mirror. I care a lot about the people that are in okay. the company, um, but I have no you shares. Have I sold the, the, day, the day I announced that I was withdrawing myself from the battle you between the all. activists, I sold every single share I had left. I didn't have that many shares left, to be right. honest, um, but I sold whatever I had. Um, uh, you know, I, I want them to succeed, um, but the, the, it's, it's the same. Thing that I've said all along, you cannot m &A your way out of it. You have to have good operations. When you were running Jordan, one of the things that you did was you talked about onshoring. Could you tell us how difficult it is to get out of China and go to Mexico, where you always said it was cheaper? Um, well, it's cheaper for some things and not for others. Um, I think that it's hard to get completely out of China in the businesses that that Newell is in. It's really, it's not their fault. It's the nature of some of the, some of the products. Um, but I think you have to, if you like, keep diversity and optionality. So if you can have facilities, Maquiladoro plants and the like in Mexico, if you can bring back onshoring uh, into, the, into the U.S. Uh, and make it cost efficient, you absolutely should do it. We were a big advocates of it. Um, and there are certain products that you always can bring back in an efficient manner. Really quick, uh, your comment on leverage made me think, you know, corporate debt concerns relative to GDP. Is leverage going to be a dirty word in the next couple of years? Well, look, here's the reality. You've got to think about where we are in the cycle. So I don't know if we're in the seventh inning, the eighth inning, or the ninth inning of, of this very long expansion that we've had. 
um, it looks like a softer landing at the moment, which is great news. And um, but you're still seeing some softness in some end markets. We've seen this in in Element. We see in Element Solutions. We see this in in some end markets. Well, you in talked China about and FX, and you talked about the macroeconomic environment as well in yeah. terms of pressure. Is that still the case? I mean, no, I know FX, but macroeconomic environment. Uh, it's it's definitely slower than it was six months ago, nine months ago. But it's still growing. It you know the American economy is a tanker that's still growing two to a half percent. Uh, you know, uh, on GDP. So, do I think it'd be a dirty word? I think if things really slow down, companies that have have you know run with high high levels of leverage could get caught wrong-footed. I'm just happy that the businesses I'm in have really delevered and positioned themselves for the long term. At what is the latter, whatever the latter quartile of the cycle?